And I think as documentary producers, it's really important to, to try and think of ways of having a shelf life for your film beyond the broadcast, because so much time and effort and love and passion goes into these often quite important issues for it just to have one, you know, sort of run on one particular channel, it just seems a bit of a shame to me. I have been working on factual and, um, and documentaries for probably about 20 years in Australia for the past 12 uh, and in that time I have um, sort of found a little niche in science and wildlife filmmaking. The documentary industry in Australia is a really solid community. I think we're very lucky here in Australia because we have Screen Australia, we have the state agencies and we have the offset which really help and I think that means that there is a little bit of scope for projects that aren't just purely commercial to be made, which I think is really important. And also for projects that are quite Australian in their content and in their importance to be made because in a, in a kind of global landscape, everything can become quite homogenised and very sort of Americanised or you know, internationalised, for want of a better word. What worries me about the Australian documentary industry at the moment is the shrinking funds that are coming from the government to public broadcasters like the ABC and also to state and federal funding agencies. Given the way the landscape works here, it's very difficult to see a future where nationally the documentary landscape is able to survive um, with you know, smaller funds. Part of the reduction in government funds has meant that a lot of the agencies have centralised into Sydney, which I think is a problem for Australia nationally. I think it's important just to kind of be aware and conscious of the size of output that's coming from different cities, where people are from and where they're getting work, and just kind of keeping tabs on that because it would be a shame with such a diverse country with so many different stories to tell to really to miss the, the opportunity to represent that. We need to adapt or die in Australia to keep up and to be able to compete internationally, which is the only way I think the industry is going to be more successful. Public broadcasters have to understand the difficulties in negotiating rights internationally uh, and be a bit more flexible, um, I think, than they have been in the past with, with some of those, those deals and rights so that it allows the producer the ability to, to go and seek financing elsewhere. What I think would be a good idea is if we could get 30% offset across the board for both television and feature. Um, I find that there are some very um, very you know, valid feature docs that really struggle to get Australian distribution that would be eligible for the offset that are Australian made um, that can't get made because of this. I understand why it's in place, but I think there's, the, there's a balance to that. I think the offset's been a real benefit to the industry and I think we shouldn't lose it. In the same way, I think PEP has been a great, um, a great resource for the smaller, sort of more emerging producers perhaps, or budgets that are not, you know, not over the, the 1 million mark or the 500,000 mark. Um, I think the lack of administration and fees around PEP is incredible, particularly for that size of budget. So I think that's a really good initiative. We have to find a balance between creating content that is very specifically Australian and uniquely Australian, that is also able to be consumed elsewhere and is interesting to other people. So I think that's a really delicate balance as well with finding the sort of, you know, what's important culturally in Australia and what gets funded on those bases, but also, you know, how can we tell stories that are actually global and international and therefore able to get financing from, you know, more than just, you know, our, our immediate neighbours.